the Lord Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If the Lord Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world, us, as the children of God, should be doing the same. I want to present to you how participation in politics is affecting the three angels' message, the preaching of the everlasting gospel. In the spirit of prophecy, we read, the world is a theater. The actors, its inhabitants, are preparing to act their part in the last great drama. The last great drama is the Sunday law. It will be passed by politicians and religious leaders. There will be a union of church and state. As the storm approaches, the spirit of prophecy says, a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message, but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth, abandon their position and join the ranks of the opposition. By uniting with the world and partaking of its spirit, they have come to view matters in nearly the same light. And when the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy popular side. Church and state, an unhappy union. The Queen of England, she is the head of the state and she is also the head of the Anglican church. In Jamaica, we have for the first time a Seventh-day Adventist who is also a governor general. The first Seventh-day Adventist pastor to serve as governor general of Jamaica is now a knight commander of the order of St. Michael and St. George, Sir Patrick Linton Allen, the immediate past president of the West Indies Union of Seventh-day Adventists was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II on June the 12th in a ceremony at Buckingham Palace. So this is a ceremony of union of church and state. The spiritual prophecy continues. God's children are to separate themselves from politics, from any alliance with unbelievers. The spirit of prophecy and the Bible tells us the same thing. We cannot unite church and state together. New prime minister of Jamaica is an Adventist, Andrew Hornes. Here, the general, the governor general and the prime minister and the bishop of the Anglican church in Jamaica, they are meeting together in what it is, a celebration, a ceremony, a union of church and state. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 tells us, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. What will happen when Seventh-day Adventist pastors or Seventh-day Adventist elders or brothers or sisters participate in politics? And when the great test is coming, the Sunday law crisis, the union of church and state forming the image of the beast, the passing of the Sunday law as a day of worship, Sunday as a day of worship, what will happen to our brothers and sisters if they are in, into politics? They will also join because they will come to think nearly in the same manner as the opposition. The spirit of prophecy says, in order for the United States to form an image of the beast, the religious power must so control the civil government that the authorities of the state, that the authority of the state will also be employed by the church to accomplish her own ends. What is the, the end or, or the purpose of the 
Roman Catholic Church to bring a national and the international Sunday law. In Matthew 22, verse 20, the Lord Jesus said, and he saith unto them, whose is this image and superscription? They answer unto him, verse 21, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, render unto, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. Very clear, the Lord Jesus makes a distinction and a separation between church and state. Those who are Christians indeed will be branches of the true vine. They will not wear political badges, but the, but the badge of Christ, spirit of prophecy. In this ceremony, union of church and state, the governor general receives a badge, but there was a petition launched to change racist image on governor's general medal. This is a raci racist and offensive image because there is a, what it appears as an angel trampling on the head of a black man. So Jamaica's governor general will no longer wear medals with white angels and black devils. But the spirit of prophecy says we should not as Christians participate in politics and not wear any badges that belong to politicians or to the world. So Jamaican Governor General Sir Patrick Allen will no longer wear a UK medal for depicting the angel Saint Michael, this is church, trampling on a black demon. This response was related to the solidarity actions of Black Lives Matter that expressed anti-racism. In Fiji, Adventist elected as president of Fiji, Major General Georgi Konosi Konroti, also known as George Konroti, will take over as president on November 12th. So in Fiji, there is a new president and the president is also a Seventh-day Adventist. It happens that Pope Francis received in audience the president of Fiji, Georgi Konosi Konroti. What did they talk about? During the cordial conversations, the good relations between the Holy See and the countries of Fiji were, and the Catholic Church and the life of the country were noted. Next, the issue of climate change was addressed and especially its ethical dimension, which calls for solidarity with the most vulnerable social groups and countries, as well as with the new generations. So they talked about the climate change and climate change is about protecting the planet earth by worshiping on Sunday, by resting on Sunday. This is what the purpose of the Roman Catholic papacy is. The Lord Jesus said in Luke 16, 13, no servant can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. In the same manner, we cannot serve God and serve politics. So Pope Francis will consider Fiji visit after the meeting they had with the Seventh-day Adventist president and the papacy. In Papua New Guinea, we also have a Seventh-day Adventist in our church. It says breaking news, Adventist name, prime minister of Papua New Guinea. His name is James Marapi. In Papua New Guinea also, church and state are coming together. It says, the state 
and churches united in fighting the emergency of COVID-19. The Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea just recently this week visited the United Nations in New York and he was stating Facebook misinfo is hurting PNG, Papua New Guinea, Marape tells the United Nations. He says Papua New Guinea's prime minister has called for more international effort to counter misinformation about COVID-19 vaccination. The Spirit of Prophecy says the health reform I was shown is a part of the third angel's message and is just a, as closely connected with it as are the arm and the hand with the human body. So when, when the third angel's message that is connected the, with the health reform is deleted from Facebook, videos, deleted from YouTube and from other platforms, what is happening is they are cutting the right arm of the third angel's message, which is the health reform. The health reform and the third angel's message go hand in hand. But what will happen to the third angel's message? The third angel's message will also be cut off from Facebook, and from any other platforms in internet. The Spirit of Prophecy says we are to recognize human government as an ordinance of divine appointment and teach obedience to it as a sacred duty within its legitimate sphere. It's interesting to notice we must respect government officials and government and obey, but when its claims conflict with the claims of God, we must obey God rather than men. God's word must be recognized as above all human legislation. Laudato Si, objectives, ecclesial proposal for sustainable development and response to poverty. It says, the encyclical Laudato Si, Laudato Si is the document of the Pope given to all presidents of the world for them to study and to sign a proposal for climate change, to sign the climate change agreement. But this was the Sunday law agreement. So the encyclical Laudato Si offers an argumentative, ethical, and spiritual basis for the sustainable development goals. Sustainable development goals is an agenda to bring the Sunday law crisis. So Laudato Si is about giving the guidelines, the spiritual guidelines for the implementation of a law to protect the planet Earth against climate change but it's about Sunday worship. That's what the document says. On Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist, the Eucharist is the mass, the sacrifice of the mass. So on Sunday, you must stop, you must rest to protect the planet Earth against climate change. This is all about. Prime Minister, calls for accessible, equitable financing to tackle climate change. This is Prime Minister Andrew Holness of Jamaica, a Seventh-day Adventist Prime Minister. Holness, however, stated that Jamaica has remained committed to advancing climate action and is determined to build forward stronger, better, and greener. This is a statement that presents the Sunday law 
for the Sunday law crisis in a statement that says better and greener. There is an agenda, there is an agenda to bring about Sabbath worship, what they call Sunday worship, and they call it Green Sabbath. It says PNG qualifies to speak on climate change. Unity for climate action needed. This is the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea when he visited Australia. And he says we need unity for climate action. And this is also the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, Seventh-day Adventist in New York. And he says, Prime Minister Marape calls on leaders to save planet Earth. Who can save planet Earth? Only our Lord Jesus. This is Zambia's new president elect. And it says he is also a Seventh Day Adventist. <clears throat> His name is Hakainde Hichilema. Hakaindi Hechilema assures church that he is working to reunite the country. Pay attention to this altar. This is the state house. And the president has stated that state house as a people's house will remain open to all citizens, including the church. But you ask which church? President Hichilema said this statement when he was joined by the Seventh-day Adventist church members in fellowship at the State House grounds. And then it says, and tomorrow the head of state will be joined by another set of Christians in praise and worship. So today is the Sabbath, Saturday. He has a special altar in the government house. And there are some Seventh-day Adventist brothers were worshiping together with him. But tomorrow, Sunday, he will have another group of Christians coming to worship here in the same place. Who are they? This morning, says Hakaindi Hichilema, the Seventh-day Adventist president of Zambia, this morning, we held mass. This is the Roman Catholic mass with the Catholic church at State House. And then he says, we embrace all Christian denominations for the body of Christ, which is one. And then he says, let us preach love and unity and with God on our side, we will triumph as a country. So on Saturday, he worshiped on one altar and on Sunday, he worshiped on another altar, but in the same place. So they are bringing church and state together. And not only that, they are bringing all religions together and celebrating the Catholic mass. What is the mass? The spiritual prophecy says, the scriptural, the scriptural ordinance of the Lord's Supper had been supplanted by the idolatrous sacrifice of the mass. Christians were required on pain of death to avow their faith in this horrible, heaven insulting heresy. Multitudes who refused were given to the flames. Many of our brothers and sisters were burned alive for not participating in the Roman Catholic sacrifice of the mass, which is idolatrous. But what is happening? This is the Seventh-day Adventist church mission. It says, are Sunday worship services a mission strategy? And then it says, as pastors seek new ways to share the Seventh-day Adventist message, some pastors have considered offering worship services on Sunday. So here they are mixing Saturday worship, Sabbath worship with Sunday worship. 
And then why Huntsville's first Seventh-day Adventist church is starting a Sunday worship service. And it says, this is Pastor De Blair Snell. The Sunday service is going to be a first point of contact for the unchurched in the community and for people who, for whatever reason, believes work cannot come on Saturday. So he says, for those people that, that work on Saturday, they can come on Sunday. For those people that have a different belief or religion, they can also come on Sunday. And they are mixing Sabbath, the true Sabbath worship with Sunday worship, just like the presidents are doing. The spirit of prophecy says the papacy is just what prophecy declared that she would be the apostasy of the latter times, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3 and 4. It is a part of her policy to assume the character which will best accomplish her purpose. But beneath the variable appearance of the chameleon, she conceals the invariable venom of the serpent. Faith ought not to be kept with heretics, no person suspected of heresy, she declares. This is the papacy. And then it says, shall this power, whose record for a thousand years is written with the blood of the saints, be now acknowledged as a part of the church of Christ? Remember the president of Zambia said that all churches belong to the body of Christ. And that's why he celebrated the Roman Catholic mass. He says, the body of Christ is one, and therefore we encourage each one of you to take time to thank God for his mercies. While in office, we will ensure that Christianity is not only in word, but also in action for faith. Without works, faith amounts to nothing. And then it says, Zambia stands as a Christian nation will be upheld to the honor and glory of our God Almighty. Bringing church and state together and bringing all religions together. Prime Minister of Jamaica praises Adventist Church for online worship services during pandemic. Remember, all churches were shut in the whole world, not only in Jamaica. It says, this is Prime Minister Andrew Hornes. The government never closed any churches through the Disaster Risk Management, Management Act. Measures taken by the government to deal with a COVID-19 pandemic in this case. <clears throat> Said Mr. Hornes, we never banned churches from opening their doors. Instead, the churches themselves decided that it was better to close their places of worship and stream their services online. Churches in Jamaica streamed their services online as early as March 21, 2020, 11 days after the first case of COVID-19 was confirmed in the country. The government then proceeded to implement restrictive measures that included protocols that limited and restricted group gatherings in all public spaces, including houses of worship. The church then implemented additional procedures for its congregations. So the Seventh-day Adventist church did it first, but then the government shut down all places of worship and then the church continued to implement more restrictive measures. The book of Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 tells us, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And verse 17, 
and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. These are the Caribbean island uh, country nation, or nations. And many of these have already passed laws that restrict worship on Sunday. And they do also what is called lockdown Sundays. This is Jamaica. St. Catherine has been placed under lockdown for seven days. This is seven days, one week. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced that the parish of St. Catherine has been placed under lockdown for seven days. And that will take place from April 15 until April 22nd, 2020. And what it says, during the lockdown, one person from each household will be allowed to conduct the essentials of life, that is shopping, on Wednesday, April 15, and Saturday, April 18. So Prime Minister Andrew Holness says, by law, you are permitted to buy your groceries on Saturday. And there was a brother by the name of Jesse Justin in Jamaica. Sabbath keeper cries foul amid SDA, that Seventh-day Adventist Church's silence, because the Seventh-day Adventist Church said nothing. That the Seventh-day Adventist Prime Minister in Jamaica commanded, together with his government, that Saturday must be the only day for shopping. It says, standing across the Cleaner Company's North Street plant, Jesse Justin, a Seventh-day Adventist called for the authorities to select another day to allow Sabbath keeping Christians limited time to shop. And then he says, you cannot force God's people to shop on their Sabbath. It is holy unto the Lord. Of course, the Bible says no shopping on the Sabbath. Nehemiah 10 verse 31. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day. We will not buy, we will not sell on the Sabbath day. That is called abomination and disregard for the law of God. It says, this is Jamaica. <clears throat> Sabbath keepers warn Sunday worshipers. This took place July 13, 2021. Convinced that the government is getting ready to introduce law that will make Sunday the designated day of worship, two Sabbath keepers have set about preparing persons to mount fierce resistance to this perceived plan. Vincent Hu, this is our brother, and Wilhelm Lecky, another of our brothers in Jamaica, leaders of the FTB ministries have mounted billboards in Portmore, St. Catherine, Mandeville, Manchester, and Mountain View Avenue in Kingston telling people that Sunday worship will be the mark of the beast. Good on these two brothers who are doing, preaching the three angels message. Then prime minister of Jamaica said, no movement days extended. Weekly no movement days abolished and we will be observed on Sunday only. Remember Sunday observance, to observe, this is the law. When we observe, we keep, but this is a day to be under lockdown for what? For preparing the mind of people that Sunday is a day of lockdown for business. It's a day of rest for people in the, in the country and in the whole world. So Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced that effective immediately 
the weekday no movement days have been discontinued. However, between the period Sunday, September 19, and Thursday, October 28, Sundays will be observed as the new no movement day. So at the present time in Jamaica, there is Sunday as a day of no movement. And it says Sunday will be observed as a no movement day. And then it says here, no religious motive behind Sunday restriction, says Holness. The government has designated Sundays as the only no movement day weekly until October 28. And then the prime minister says, rather, he argued that traditionally Saturdays have been reserved as a market day and for, for other commercial activities which benefited the island's economy. Who benefited, benefited the island economy? Is not God? And yet the prime minister says, Saturday shopping and Saturday business, Saturday commerce has benefited Jamaica's economy. This is not right, it's wrong. But there were some Sunday worshipers that were unhappy because of Sunday lockdown, Sunday no movement. He says, Sunday worshipers say no to lockdown. Several Sunday church goers are livid that their day of worship has been designated as a no movement day. And they are protesting against the prime minister in Jamaica. It says, it really looks to me that you have a problem with the Sunday church. This is what they are saying to the Seventh-day Adventist prime minister. It looks to me that you have a problem with the Sunday church. People mostly party on Saturdays. And if it is that you are looking on, then Sunday shouldn't be considered as the day for no movement. movement. And then he says, Sunday worshipers allowed to gather on no movement day. Kingston, Jamaica, effective this weekend, Sunday worshipers will be allowed to gather for services, but only 50 people, maximum number. The spiritual prophecy says, under various disguises, the Jesuits worked their way into offices of state, climbing up to be the counselors of kings and shaping the policy of nations they became servants to act as spies upon their masters. And then the spirit of prophecy also say, they, Christians, us, are not to spend their time talking politics or acting politics, for by so doing, they give the enemy opportunity to come in and cause variance and discord. So it's very clear. My brother, my sister, you belong to the kingdom of heaven. You are a royal priesthood of believers waiting for the king of kings, our Lord Jesus, who is king of kings. Who are those kings? It's you, it's me. My brother, my sister, we are kings to the Lord Jesus and to his kingdom. We are not to participate in politics. You want to be saved. I want to be saved. This is very clear. Those who participate in politics, they are siding with the opposition in the Sunday law crisis. The spirit of prophecy says, I thus say as the Lord is not to be set aside for I thus say as the church or I thus say as the state. The crown of Christ is to be lifted up above the diadems of earthly potentates. My brother, my sister, we are not servants to the church or to the state. We are servants to the Lord Jesus. Therefore, we do not obey the church mandates. We do not obey the government mandates if they contradict 
I thus saith the Lord. If these mandates contradict also the freedom of conscience, may God bless you, my brother, my sister, and may God bless our Seventh-day Adventist Church in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in America, in the islands. May God bless our brothers and sisters. And may we also continue to preach the three angels message, which is the, 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 the word of the Lord. The three angels message, which is the message of the Lord Jesus. The revelation of the Lord Jesus given to the church for these last days. 